Hello, YouTube. Sir Dragon X here. Is it true that the United States IRS can track you and your financial assets here in Mexico? We're going to discuss that in a video coming up next. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the channel. In my most recent live stream, a comment came up that raised my curiosity. I was mentioning the importance of obtaining an RFC in Mexico. During the conversation, one of my viewers mentioned that he had seen a video by Kuru Paul about obtaining your RFC in Mexico. The viewer stated that Kuru Paul mentioned that in the video you needed to provide your United States Social Security number in order to obtain an RFC. I'm an avid fan of Kuru Paul and was confused and unaware of such a video. But this is where things got really interesting. This revelation sparked an engaging discussion amongst my audience, revealing that some viewers had been asked for their U.S. Social Security number when establishing a bank account here in Mexico. This was news to me, as my own experience with opening a bank account here did not involve such a requirement. It got even more interesting when a viewer mentioned in the comments section having to complete a form for the U.S. Internal Revenue Service as part of setting up their Mexican bank account. Drawing on my background in federal law enforcement, particularly in investigating financial crimes, alongside with my experience as a liaison to the Financial Crimes Enforcement Network in Washington, D.C., and my diplomatic efforts in tracking financial crimes in collaboration with the Mexican government, I had my theories about the underlying reasons, yet I felt compelled to delve deeper and verify my assumptions. Yep, it turns out that my hunch was right. It is true that some banks in Mexico do in fact require a United States Social Security number when opening up a bank account, and yes, some even make you fill out an Internal Revenue Service form. Your mileage may vary depending on the bank. Turns out this is due to an often overlooked United States law called the Foreign Account Tax Compliance Act. This topic is rarely, if ever, discussed in YouTube videos and on Facebook groups when discussing moving to Mexico. This law won't affect a majority of U.S. citizens living here in Mexico, but it's essential to understand because the consequences of this law can be fatal for noncompliance for those it applies to. Also realize that today it may not apply to you, but it may apply to you in the future. So it's essential for everyone to be aware of this law just in case one day you need to comply. So in today's video, we're going to do a high level breakdown of what fact is and how it may affect you as an expat. What is this law and what's the purpose you may ask? The Foreign Account Tax Compliance Act, FACTA, is a United States federal law that was enacted in 2010. Its primary aim is to combat tax evasion by U.S. citizens and residents through the use of offshore accounts. FACTA requires foreign financial institutions and certain other non-foreign entities to report the foreign assets held by their foreign account holders to the Internal Revenue Service. In simple terms, it makes it easier for the IRS to track you, and it makes it harder for Americans to hide money and assets in foreign banks and financial institutions to avoid paying taxes. So it turns out this is why it's not uncommon for Mexican banks to ask you for your Social Security number so that they can actually fill out an IRS Form 8966 identifying the account holder as a U.S. person holding an account in their institution. That's right, folks. Mexican banks actually fill out an IRS form on United States citizens owning a bank account in Mexico. In the case of my viewer, the bank made her fill out the form up front. So for those of you who may think that just because you have money in a Mexican bank account or make money here in Mexico and think that there's no way for the United States to find out, well, guess what? They actually can. This is how the IRS is able to enforce foreign bank account reporting violations. I did a previous video on the FBAR, so if you're interested, I will leave a link in the video description below. So what does this mean for me, you might ask? Well, for United States citizens living in Mexico, this means a few things. 
Firstly, if you have financial assets in Mexico, think bank accounts, investments, pensions, or even certain insurance policies, and they exceed the reporting threshold, you're obligated to report those to the IRS when they're filing your taxes. The thresholds vary depending on your filing status and whether you live in the U.S. or abroad. But as a rule of thumb, if you have more than $200,000 in foreign financial assets at the end of the tax year or $300,000 at any time during the year, you need to pay attention to factor requirements while doing your taxes. It's also important to note that if your Mexican bank account ever hits a value of over $10,000 at any point during the year, you must fill out a foreign bank account report, also known as an FBAR. This report can be filed with the Financial Crimes Enforcement Network apart from filing your taxes. FACTA holds a significant impact on United States citizens worldwide, including those in Mexico. It's not just about filing your U.S. taxes in which you need to do regardless of where you live, but you also need to ensure that you are compliant with FACTA and FBAR reporting requirements. If you are not, you could face withholding taxes, fines, or even have your accounts frozen. The key here is transparency and ensuring that all your foreign assets are properly reported. What if your bank account never asked you for your social security number when you open your bank account like me? Well, you're not out of the woods. They may contact you in the future and ask you for your social security number, or they may just report your account to the IRS using the information they have available, which includes your passport. The IRS can actually cross-reference your passport number to get your social security number. Bottom line is when it comes to FACTA, you can't hide from Uncle Sam, so be aware of the reporting requirements. In my own personal experience, having lived in Mexico for almost seven years, I never met the reporting requirements till last year, and I had to fill out an FBAR for the first time. I sure am glad that I was aware of the requirements because failure to fill out the FBAR could have resulted in a $10,000 fine if I hadn't known. Most importantly, remember that claiming ignorance is not a defense. While FACTA might not be the most popular topic amongst expats in Mexico, its implications are too important to ignore. Being informed and prepared can save you from potential legal and financial issues down the line. We hope this video sheds some light on the importance of FACTA and FBAR compliance for United States citizens living in Mexico. If you found this guide helpful, please like, share, and subscribe. It really helps me to make more content to help you. Until next time, stay safe and stay informed.